I'm Bob Coleman, and we're talking Main Street and the small business lenders who help it grow. Thank you to this week's sponsor, America West, and this just in, SBA Administrator, Linda McMahon, has agreed to be the keynote speaker. So listen to this little promo and get your staff there. Chuck Evans, president of Capital Growth Solutions and founder of the Advised America West Conference in June in Costa Mesa, California. Chuck, why do you want your lenders to bring their staff to your event? Our conference is going to be a little different than the other regional conferences that have been out there that are very, very good. We're going to focus on education. These are going to be 18 classes, 90 minutes each, with two or three instructors or facilitators in each class. The price points where we're focusing on lenders that want, that are doing maybe six, seven loans a year or getting into SBA lending, want to build out a department. There's lots of questions that we hear when we, we, we talk to these lenders that these, this kind of information isn't necessarily uh, discussed at some of the other venues like Nagel and the district offices. So we're going to focus on, on some of the areas that you, the questions that you have in starting departments are growing from six loans to 16 loans a year. And you have the buy-in from SBA, you have a great, Absolutely. Uh, a lot of peer in, professional, yes. so that's great. <laughs> See you all in June in Costa Mesa. Thank you very much, Bob. See you then. This week is National Small Business Week, a time we set aside each year to honor the almost 30 million small businesses in America. Um, I'm a stats guy, you know that, so I, I want to read off these stats. I believe we should all know these stats cold when we get into discussions of what we do. Hey, we're supporting Main Street. But listen to this. As I said, 29 million small businesses in the United States. And a lot of you work for a small business. I understand that. 99.9% .9 of all businesses in America are small business. 99.9%. 47% of private sector employees work for a small business. 46% of private sector output GDP is from a small business. And the most important stat at all, two thirds of all new jobs created in the United States comes from small business. So there's a lot of hype for this week. I think we should embrace it. And good, good for you for supporting America's Main Street. And speaking of supporting America's Main Street, uh, I'm including this little 30 second clip from the SBA Administrator about Small Business Week. I'm SBA Administrator Linda McMahon. Please join me as we celebrate National Small Business Week, April 29th to May 5th, honoring the entrepreneurs and innovators who make our communities thrive. This year, we'll host the first ever National Small Business Week virtual conference where you can learn valuable business insights and build your professional network. You can get more info at sba.gov nsbw. And join the conversation on social media with hashtag Small Business Week. Coleman webinar instructor extraordinaire Lance Sexton did a webinar about the changes in the SOP. And there was an interesting discussion about marijuana. Listen up. I want to talk about eligibility. Before I get into this, I uh, want to talk about the marijuana business. And I know you guys were all waiting for this. Uh, you know, I believe my generation probably does not support recreational marijuana. Most of us do support uh, medicinal marijuana. Even my state, Arkansas, recently passed uh, legalization of medicinal marijuana. So, whether you like it or you don't, this is a part of lending that we're going to have to deal with as we go forward. And it would surprise me if any of our participants has not been asked to provide financing to a medicinal marijuana uh, operation or, or maybe in California and other states, they may be, have been asked about recreational. SBA makes it very clear in the April 3rd release, and it's also clear in the SOP 5010 5J that you cannot provide loans to businesses that are operating, whether it be medicinal or recreational marijuana, and it even extends beyond that. And the reason for that is it's not legal on a federal level, and the SBA is a federal agency. <clears throat> 
The release says you cannot lend money to dr people directly involved. That would include growers and retail outlets for medicinal or recreational marijuana. Additionally, indirect businesses. This includes people who sell growing equipment. You know, it may be an agricultural business and, and you have to pay attention to the product lineup of agricultural equipment businesses, because if they have something that might be related uh, to the growing of marijuana, you're, it's not an eligible SBA loan. Uh, for lack of a better description, head shops, which maybe I should describe it, uh, those retail businesses that sell uh, accessories for smoking marijuana, things like rolling papers, bongs, pipes, uh, those businesses are not eligible for an SBA loan. Hemp-related businesses, which I find this pretty interesting, uh, you know, p businesses that sell products made from hemp, clothing, hemp clothing, hemp paper, and hemp uh, rope are not eligible for SBA financing. Uh, the other thing that's interesting that you have to pay attention to, let's say you have a commercial real estate loan for a business that's going to occupy 60% of the building and they're going to lease out 40%. That, and that's acceptable under SBA financing. But they cannot lease out the remainder of the building of the building to someone directly involved in the marijuana business or someone indirectly. So let's say Lance builds a commercial building, it's going to operate a furniture store and 70% of it, but I'm going to going to least 30 percent of it to a smoke shop who sells bongs and rolling papers. Uh, that would make it an ineligible loan. So as SBA participant lenders, and I know we've gone off into an interesting arena of discussion today that you probably didn't expect, but this particular rule is an interesting one to me. When you have those situations where the your operating company is not going to operate in 100 percent of the business and you're going to lease it, uh, you cannot lease it to somebody directly or indirectly involved in the marijuana business, whether it be medicinal or recreational, nor can you lease it to somebody selling clothing made from hemp or rope or other products. I don't know what all's made from hemp, but it's a consideration when you have that type of project. So I just wanted to talk about that on eligibility didn't have a particular slide on it, but it's, a, you know, the important takeaways is I think all of us would immediately say somebody directly involved in that business, we can't do the loan, but might not have thought about those indirectly. I mean, how many, I grew up in the 70s and 80s and record shops used to always have this little back room where, you know, they did sell uh, marijuana related accessories and smoke shops have some of that. And I was even in a convenience store down the road from my house and they had water pipes available for sale. Uh, well, given the fact that they're selling marijuana related accessories, that business is not eligible for an SBA loan. So it's something to think about. And the rental factor is also something to think about. If they're going to rent part of the building, you can't rent it to somebody directly, indirectly uh, related to the marijuana business as well as the hemp business. In last week's office hours, Lance and I were discussing credit elsewhere, a hot topic in the industry. And we had a question that Lance and I had never heard before. Listen up. This is from yesterday's webinar, which is a great question. I never heard this question before. Does the credit elsewhere rule apply for loans of servicing? We have a borrower who is doing very well, and we want to lower the interest rates so we don't get refinanced by a conventional lender. Uh, this case study was the loan has been on the books for two years. So is credit elsewhere applicable to this situation, Lance? Uh, there's nowhere in the SOP 5057 that it talks about credit elsewhere, except when you get in the liquidation portion. Uh, in servicing, uh, credit elsewhere, credit elsewhere is a factor at the point of origination. It, once the loan is closed and then servicing, uh, if you are taking proactive steps to keep the loan, lowering the interest rate is the servicing action that is unilateral with SBA. You just have to put the changes in uh, ETRAN. Uh, 
Uh, but but no, credit elsewhere would not apply in this situation. This is She's saying, hey, this is now a conventional credit. Um, so that's a great answer. Great question, great answer, Lance. I want to conclude this week's update with two one-minute clips from the House of Representatives extolling the virtue of small business. Senator John Curtis out of Utah and Dr. Roger Marshall of Kansas. Mr. Speaker, I'm pleased to stand before you today to celebrate National Small Business Week. With 30 million small businesses in the country and nearly 280,000 of those in Utah, I was proud to join with my colleagues on the Small Business Committee to co-author House Resolution 840 to recognize the vital role of small businesses. It should come as no surprise that Utah is consistently ranked among the best in the nation for innovative startups and small businesses. In fact, small, small businesses make up over 99% of Utah's business, employ one half of all state and all employees, and are responsible for two thirds of our job growth. After spending much of my career as a scrappy small business owner myself, I strongly believe that small business is the heartbeat of our economy. From emerging tech companies in Silicon Slopes to mom and pop shops in rural Utah, I'm proud to salute the overwhelming impact of these small businesses. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, April, tw April 29th through May 5th is National Small Business Week. Recent studies and surveys have shown that small business optimism is at an all-time high, and I've seen that firsthand with the businesses I have met throughout the Big First District in Kansas. Today, I rise to recognize the hard work and perseverance our small business owners have and acknowledge our critical role in our local communities. In the United States, small businesses create about two out of every three jobs per year, and more than half of Americans either own or work for a small business. Over the past year and a half, I've had the opportunity to have meaningful conversations with many of the small businesses across my district, from Superior Boiler Works in Hutchinson to Midwest Energy in Hayes. I've listened and learned about the issues they face and the ways that Congress can better support small businesses in Kansas. Due to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, I am proud that small businesses will now work with lower tax rates and, tax rates and a fairer tax code. From big cities to small towns, entrepreneurs and small business owners across the country are creating jobs and contributing to the growth of local economies. I encourage my colleagues to join me in celebrating our small business leaders. I appreciate all the great feedback you've given us on the update. Lance and I enjoy doing it. It's a fun exercise. Hey, if you have a cool video of a small business success story or something about your institution, about what you do for SBA lending, for Main Street lending, shoot it over to us. Thank you for joining us today for the Coleman Report update and for supporting America's Main Street, one entrepreneur at a time.